Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport this week takes us to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. At least that's the home of our guest. He's the head coach of West Forsyth, home of the Titans in Clemens, North Carolina. He joins us now. Does Maurice Atwood. Maurice, how are you? Doing well, Scott. How are you? I'm good, man. It's, it's great that we can finally get this interview done. We've been working on it for about three, four months, but uh, here we are today, face-to-face, yet one more time to to discuss what uh, is going on in your career. Let's do a little bit of, of a brief review for our viewers. 17 years as a coach. There are some years, of course, as an assistant as well. A uh, 48-year-old um, who loves to teach, loves to coach. You recently, uh, maybe a year and a half, two years ago, made a choice to leave Parkland High School where you had a eight consecutive championship run uh, 345 consecutive dual meet wins, and it had to have been a difficult, uh, a difficult decision to leave uh, Parkland. But let's talk about that. Not specifically why. That's perhaps not the interesting part, because I think what's interesting is what's to come as we draw the picture of your career. So welcome to the show, and tell us a bit about, about uh, Parkland and your time there. Well, I want to correct. The number was actually 365. 365, I pardon, pardon yeah. me. Yeah, uh, that's okay. Uh, but we just want to get it right. And um, my time there was phenomenal. The kids I worked with were even more more phenomenal. Uh, the people I worked with were great. Um, and, you know, I, I have no regrets um, in anything that happened while I was at Parkland. Uh, it was a phenomenal experience that I will always remember and cherish. Uh, but uh, the time came when I felt like it was time to leave, and, and I did. So coming from Carson Newman in Tennessee, uh, you had a couple stops along the way in, in your educational pursuits. You decided you want to be a teacher slash coach and focus on wrestling. Why wrestling? Well, wrestling is what transformed my life. Uh, I grew up a troubled kid. Uh, my mother raised seven kids by herself. And I was next to the youngest and um, uh, was getting in a lot of trouble. Uh, got, you know, I, I used to think that the way to prove and I was right over somebody was by beating them up and uh, got in a lot of street fights growing up and was in a lot of trouble. And my high school wrestling coach uh, came up one day and put his arm around me and, and um, said, uh, he, he planted a thought in my head of going to college and, and doing something constructive with my life. And, you know, I was 17 years old at the time and it was the first time anybody in my life had ever talked to me about going to college. And it just grew from there. And, and I, I, you know, wanted to do what he did. And, um, uh, because it, you know, it, it, what he was able to do, the connection he and I had was a connection I'd never had before with a male figure. And I, by in the school I was in, he was like that for a lot of kids, and I wanted to do that. And so that's what put me on the path to becoming a teacher and a coach. So your wrestling coach said or challenged you, whether he out and out challenged you or not, you, you took it as such, and that is to be a better man than even you thought you could be. Wrestling and college really wasn't on the horizon for you, was it? But even a thought in my mind, and until... That fateful day in December of 1986, uh, he came up and just out of nowhere, he just put his arm around me and said, hey, man, you ever thought about going to college? And I said, nope. And he said, think about it, and walked away. <laughs> you know, and of course, we, you know, we had subsequent conversations about it uh, throughout the rest of the time I was in high school. And, uh, but, but yeah, other than that, the thought had never entered my mind, ever. Marie Sandwood in the Nike hot seat today. Sits in his office in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, the head coach of the West Forsyth Titans. They obviously knew what they were hiring when they said, hey, what do you think? And Parkland knew what they were losing when you take with you a record of 365 consecutive duels and eight consecutive uh, North Carolina high school championships. I mean, that's a statement in and of itself. But more than anything, what I'm getting from you uh, as you sit in the Nike hot seat today, what I'm getting from you is a, is, is a uh, severe uh, love of the opportunity to change kids' lives. 
And, and coach, that has to be a deep burning desire for you. Well, it is. Um, a lot of the kids that I work with, not as much at West, although there are some there as it was at Parkland. Um, a lot of the kids have, have a lot of personal adversity that they have to overcome. And to be able to help those kids do that um, was uh, intrinsically rewarding in ways that you can never compensate somebody for. And, um, you know, and, and it's, it's prideful for me to be able to say that a lot of these kids that I work with were able to graduate high school who may not have otherwise that are now productive citizens in, in society. Uh, not that all of them turned out that way. I've got former wrestlers that are in prison, but, but I've got a lot of them that are out there, uh, serving in the U S military or, or in college, uh, uh, and have graduated from college and are school teachers themselves or whatever. Uh, and they're contributing to society rather than the opposite. And, uh, so to, to have been a part of that, shaping process intrinsically for me is uh, the most rewarding feeling you can ever have. And, to, um, and, and yes, that's the main reason I do what I do. I, I love the kids that I work with. Uh, I push them hard and, and, I, and I, uh, I implement a strategy that I call tough love, but it's what these guys need to make it in the real world. And because it's a, it's a dog eat dog world and they have to be aware of that. And it's not going to be easy to make it. And, and I stress that to them almost every day. You see these kids once a day. A lot of them have not had any prior wrestling experience. As a matter of fact, in North Carolina, if memory serves, uh, middle school or junior high for some, uh, does not have or offer wrestling. Is that true, Coach? Well, there are some areas of the state that have middle school wrestling. But in the school system I work for, we do not have middle school wrestling. So, uh 99 out of 100 kids that I get have never wrestled prior to high school. So when they come in as a ninth grader, they're green as grass. They know nothing about wrestling, and uh, we have to teach them the basic fundamentals and bring them all the way through. My goodness sakes, what a challenge that is. And patience must be the watchword, Coach. Well, well yes, patience, but hard work. And that, that's the key to our success is we outwork everybody. And, you know, I run a, a fully implemented uh, varsity and JV schedule throughout the season. We do uh, uh, preseason workouts and off-season workouts. We're going to tournaments uh, every Saturday uh, that we can get to them and uh, keeping these guys as busy as possible, as active as possible to make them as competitive as possible. And obviously, Coach, I know of your other love and teaching you uh, stress grades. You stress the importance of a solid educational experience. Can you talk about that? Oh, absolutely. All the time. Uh, you know, kids today are more inclined to play a video game than they are to do their homework or even work out. Uh, and you got to pull that out of them. And to, to be a, to be a high school teacher and a high school coach and not um, push the kids in an academic way is negligence in my opinion. I, you know, I'm always checking my, my guys grades. I'm checking their attendance. If my kids aren't in class on time, I find out why. if they're not in school, I call them to find out why they're not in school. I keep in contact with their teachers to make sure they're doing their schoolwork and acting like they got some sense. So, you know, it's a, it's an all encompassing, uh, experience for my guys because it's not just, uh, a matter of teaching them how to wrestle and, and, and having a competitive team, but it's also making sure they're doing the right thing in school. Uh, and a lot of times I have teachers that tell me, uh, that they're, that my guys tell them if they, if they do something wrong, call my mom or dad, don't tell coach Atwood. <laughs> so, so that's how active I stay on top of my guys to make sure that, uh, number one, they stay eligible. Number two, they're uh, learning something. You know, I tell my guys, when you go to class every day, you should come out a better social studies student than it was that you went in class or a better math student than what it was you went into class. Just like when you come to practice, you need to work hard every day 
and leave a better wrestler than what it was you came in as. Well, it's the same thing as being a student. You need to leave smarter from that class than you were prior to coming into that class. Coach, how tall are you? I'm six foot two. Six foot two. And you got to go an easy 200 pounds, yeah? Uh, I'm about 330 pounds. Okay, see, I'm going to class. That's what I'm talking about. I I don't want Coach Atwood to be getting up in my business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So we leave Parkland after a tremendous performance, a great history. At some point, the undefeated um, most likely would have stopped when. We don't know. Uh, oh, yeah. The consecutive win championships would have stopped. We don't know when. But you go to West Forsyth, and at, to this point, West Forsyth had not had uh, a team state championship in any boy's part. Uh, and, 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 and you took that as a personal challenge, didn't you? Uh, yes, I did. Actually, they, uh, they, they won the baseball state championship about a month after they hired me. So the baseball team beat me to it. But, uh, but yes, uh, prior to that, there had been no, uh, boys state championship teams and only, uh, two teams in school history, the girls cross country team in the mid nineties won two state championships. So the school was really dilapidated as far as winning state titles is concerned. And, and, and I did, I, I made a proclamation that I hope that somebody else beats me to the opportunity of winning the state championship and baseball won it that year. Well, and, uh, congratulations and then, to baseball. Absolutely. And, um, and then we won it this year. And then, uh, a couple months after we won it this year, the girls softball team won the state championship. So I told, I told my principal since he's hired me, the schools won three state championships. I think it's a good hire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. We're talking with Maurice Atwood. Coach, uh, when you get to a program that has not enjoyed or experienced uh, a great deal of success, uh, you come in, you create that, that whole uh, psychology of a winning attitude. We're going to outwork everybody. We're going to be smarter. We're going to be better in the classroom. We're going to be positive. We're going to support each other. And your first year falls a little short of the mark, 39-2. and two. What happened, Coach? We just weren't ready. Uh, we had a good team. And going into the uh, state dual team playoffs, we were 39-1. and one. And uh, the one match we lost, um, it broke my win streak. I, at, we had act, I had actually got to 391 consecutive wins. And we wrestled Davie County. And uh, the, the last match of that dual meet came down to uh, the last individual match, which ended up going into, guess what, overtime. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the score at the time was 28-27, and my guy ended up losing. And um, so we lost, and, and I lost the streak. Of course, you know, that was you know big news around here and all that. But, um, uh, but then we got to the state playoffs, and a team in our first round, the team we had to wrestle, Northwest Guilford, uh, we had beat them earlier. Uh, like two weeks earlier, and uh, again in the state duels, uh, you know it's just a different environment. It's a different, com completely different animal. And and my team had they had just not been in that environment. They had you know they hadn't been uh, in the state duels and ex had that experience that that do or die experience. And and uh, Northwest showed up. Uh, we didn't. They got the win. We went home and had to sit and stew on it for uh, an entire year. And then the next year when it, uh, when we got our opportunity, we rolled. And you rolled big time, 50 and yeah. one picked up the championship as well. Marie Sanders. No, we were, we were 50 and 0. 50 and 0. And, uh, uh, and, uh, I got the dog's the attention with that number, didn't I? I'm sorry. I say I got the dog's attention with that. Yeah, number. you did. Sorry. Yeah, you did. <laughs> we're talking with Maurice Atwood and Maurice. I, I've got to, I've got to say, first of all, congratulations on an outstanding career. But uh, the guys at West Forsyth made it abundantly clear they want winning. They want that winning experience because that winning experience serves to do several things. And one of those things is to help motivate the entire student body towards something they can all rally around. Or am I selling that uh, short? No, you're absolutely right. Um, every school in some way, shape, or form is known for something. And, uh, and you know, and athletics is not what defines a school, but I'm going to tell you, it's like the front porch on your house. It's the first thing everybody sees. 
And, 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 and in my opinion, I think any principal that doesn't push athletics is really doing a disservice to his or her school because uh, it is, it, it's the front porch on your house. It's what everybody sees. And, 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 you know, there's a lot of things that people say about schools that are bad, where, especially when they're, they're not performing up to standard or what their expectations. But you can have a good football team or a good basketball team or a good baseball team or a good wrestling team or whatever, and, and the community can stay moderately happy with what's going on at the school, even if the school is underperforming, although underperformance is a much more important uh, intangible that needs to be corrected. And they say sometimes you learn more about underperforming. You learn more about disappointment. You learn more about what it is you really want to do. Do you want to be wallowing in disappointment or do you want to be reveling in success? And success is not always found in the win column. It is a lot, but it's not mm -hmm. always found there. It's in personal growth. And you encourage your athletes to grow personally. You're along for the ride. You're encouraging. You're talking with the parents. You're communicating with your administration. And the kids are the ones that are, you know, receiving the benefits. And coach, for that, we thank you. I know that there are people along the way that have been there to help you. You mentioned your high school coach that said, "If you thought about college, let's talk about it. Let's explore what those opportunities and options are." Uh, but uh, you you were able to rise above it all, Maurice, and and uh, along the way, you found a, a, a sincere desire to help those kids that you coach. And it's one of the reasons why you you become who you are at six nineteen and twenty eight, uh, at 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 six foot two, three hundred and twenty pounds. Uh, you know, it, it, you're a giant of a man in many ways. Size, perhaps the least uh, the least relevant. But uh, I congratulate you for the coach that you become and those that uh, are getting the benefit. Well, I appreciate that very much. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm 330. I'm not 320 yet, but I'm going <laughs> to get there. I was giving you the benefit of the <laughs> doubt, Maurice. Why are you going to correct me in my numbers all the time? I just want to get it right for all the viewers out there. That's all. <laughs> in case the ladies are watching. Okay. Um, well, look, Maurice, can we do it again? Can we do what again? The, an, an interview? Or yeah, we yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll catch up with you say, at the end of the season because uh, school's about ready to get underway again. And don't uh, remind me. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> But I, I really want to see how you continue to progress. Uh, and then, of course, how West Forsyth and the Titans continue to progress. And at any point in time, no matter the cost, it would be a pleasure to wear a West Forsyth jersey on my show. Oh, well, that's easy. I can, I can send you one of them. That's well, easy. Well, don't hang up because I'm going to send you an address and uh, okay. tell you all about that. Okay. But it's been our pleasure having you in the Nike hot seat today, Maurice. Thank you very much. Thank you much. very much. For the West Forsyth Titans, he is Maurice Atwood. And you read about this guy. He's all out there, and for a reason. He's very successful at what he does, and he's producing great kids. I'm Scott Casper for Takedown Wrestling. We appreciate you watching.